before me, Lord. And I pray, God, that I'll know how to behave myself in this pulpit and anointing upon us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Shake hands of your brother and sister in the Lord. It's so good to see you. And today's lesson is a, is a good lesson. Some lessons are they're just easy, easy to, to speak, teach, and, and I like this lesson. It's called um, Divine Provision and Protection. Divine Provision and Protection. Now, the fact that the modifier, divine, is in that phrase, it means that there could be other than divine. It means that there could be uh, natural provision and protection. But today we're going to talk about divine provision and protection. Sometimes it might look like it's natural. It might look, might look like somebody's doing it for you or to you or you're doing it for yourself when behind the scenes the Lord is there all the time. And uh, our breath is in his hand. And so if he would take our breath, there would be no taking care of ourselves, would there? Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. And Paul, most people believe Paul is the writer of Hebrews. Let your conversation, which means your conduct, your lifestyle, be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Verse 6, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I've heard Brother Pugh say many times, everything I need, I have right now. Everything I need, I have right now. I don't need tomorrow's bread right now. Everything I have, the Lord has provided. He wants us to be daily. Amen. He wants us to be daily. And then the lesson text is in Deuteronomy, going way over in the five books of Moses' law, Deuteronomy chapter 33, 26 through 29. And Moses is sort of winding things down. This is his last words, that some of the last words he's going to speak. Thank the Lord the scribe was there to write them down. Deuteronomy 33, 26 through 29. There is none like unto the God of Jezerun. And Jezerun, I believe someone said, I haven't studied this out, I'll just take what they said, is that that is Israel in its perfected state, in its future state, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help and his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Don't we sing a song, something about everlasting arms? I think so. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The foundation of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Verse 29, happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. In Philippians, back over into the New Testament, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, Paul is saying, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And we quote this scripture, and this is a great scripture. 
but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul was rounding up some support for some poor saints and poor churches, and a lot of the people of the Lord and a lot of the churches all got together and raised some money. They made themselves poorer to help uh, people that were struggling. And so after they did that, after they gave away their supply they had, then Paul said, my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. And the focus thought, we can count on the support and strength of the Lord as we face the everyday battles of Christian life. Divine provision and protection. We have all, I'm sure, found ourselves falling upon hard times where we didn't have uh, maybe two nickels to rub together. Maybe we didn't know where the next meal was coming from. We didn't know uh, how we were going to pay that bill that's sitting on the table. Don't, don't have next month's rent. And uh, we turn to the Lord. And God is faithful, and, and he does provide, and he does protect. Now, we're talking about provision just then, but then also protection. Every day we hear, we read about terrible things that are happening in the world, in, in our nation, and it's, it's, you're taking your life in your own hands when you get out on the highway or go into a store or into your workplace. Just such violence out there. And we need the angels of the Lord. And we have that good promise that the angels of the Lord will protect us. Thank God for that. Amen? There's um, people have alarms on their home. They have uh, intruder detection and alarms. And they have um, theft protections on their vehicles and so forth. And some people... Uh, have uh, security service by Smith and Wesson, if you know what I'm saying. And so uh, I read the sign. It says, no trespassing. Survivors will be prosecuted. So think about that. If you survive, you're going to court. <laughs> In other words, you might not survive. But you know what? <clears throat> it's wonderful to have the Lord. We do what we could and we should, but it's wonderful to have the Lord and know that he does protect us. He watches over us, and he fights for us. And we're going to read some stories and tell some stories in the, in the Word today that are just so exciting to me. And uh, we need that. But David declared in Psalm 103 and 2. I love Psalm 103. But verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, the Lord has so many benefits, and it's easy to forget them. But one benefit is that he provides for us. Another benefit is that he protects us. And this is not just for here and now, but it's for all of eternity. It has been all of our life since we were conceived. And in, well into eternity, way into the never-ending eternity, Eternity. He has provision. He's made a way for us, and he's going to protect us, and he's going to keep us. And uh, Jesus said, everybody you put in my hand, I haven't lost any of them. And so, thank God, he's a keeper. And we can think back of the, the wonderful things that God has done for us, filled us with the Holy Ghost, set us apart, given us healing for our bodies and for our minds and for our souls. And he's given us peace in the time of, of trouble, and he's given comfort in the time of sorrow, and, and uh, he's kept us through the storms of life. And all of these become testimonies, and we don't want to forget these things. And, 
And so these testimonies uh, give us the confidence and faith that as we go forward and face new things, that he's going to do it again and again and again. David is telling us today, don't forget these benefits as we go forward. And the Lord fights our battles. I've had battles. I know you've had battles of many, many different kinds. And I've had to call on the Lord Jesus. This is too much for me. I, I'm helpless here, Lord, and it looks like the end is near for me. I need you to help me. And we know that Jesus will help us. He always does. And he gives us these stories in the book. I love the book. And this book has so many stories, and they're, they're living stories, they're true stories. And if the Lord did it uh, for them, he'll do it for us. And because he's faithful, and he's, he's uh, dependable, um, I don't have to fear, you don't have to fear uh, if the Lord's going to provide for you. You don't have to worry about if he's going to protect you because you're his child. And, uh, and uh, I had the sweetest little mother, and I'm going to see her again someday, sooner than later. And uh, my mom was so kind to me. She loved me. She was merciful. She was tender-hearted. She was a good listener. She was forgiving. And I didn't have to worry about earning that or doing things to, to, to cause her to do that. That was just the way she responded to me, and it was out of her character. That was who she was. And the Lord responds to us that way. It's out of his character. That's, that's who he is, and that's just the way he is, and he's that way all the time. So... It's a wonderful thing to know that. Isn't that right? And he was that way to his people, Israel, and he's that way to us. In Israel, it, I think for, a, say, a church or a group of people, let's say, well, we know faith apostolic family as good as we know any family. Isn't that right? But uh, we would have to really mess up and be a terrible church to be as bad as Israel was. <laughs> you know, after the Lord delivered them. But uh, God was still merciful, and he still delivered them, and it was back and forth a whole lot. But uh, I want to talk about how that the Lord protects and defends and provides. And it was a time in, in, um, in the king, of the kings, and uh, Judah was was doing a little better than Israel. Israel had already fallen to the Assyrians. The Assyrians, they, they were bad, 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 cruel, mean, oh, nasty people. And uh, Israel had already fallen. And so, and that was under uh, Sargon. And so Sennacherib, uh, his son, the son of Sargon too, had his eyes on Judah. He's going to take them down. And he was going city by city by city, defeating it, uh, killing them, taking them as prisoners of war. People that stayed had to give him tribute. I like the way King James says, and they brought him gifts. Oh, like, here's your birthday. Here's, nah, it ain't no gift. Not like that, folks. Uh-uh. It was tribute, heavy taxation without representation, right? And time to have a tea party, I'd say. Well, anyway, so the Lord, through King Hezekiah, and King Hezekiah was not a bad king, uh, when, well, let me just go back to, to Assyria and Sennacherib and his fierce army. They took down, I think, something like 46, 42 or 46 cities in Judah. And they took down Lachish, which was a major defense city, and so that collapsed, and he's heading for Jerusalem. But before he went with the big army, he sent his 
military commander. And so I just want to read a scripture that says right here in Chronicles. So the, the stories in Chronicles, it's also in Isaiah, because Isaiah was the prophet at the time. Second Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. So he said, be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him, and with him is the arm of the flesh, but with us the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Now I'm going to go, and this might take the rest of the time, but I want to go to Isaiah chapter 36. We're going to do a lot of reading, but I could tell you the story, but let's read it. I might skip some verses, but I might just read them. Let's go to Isaiah 36 and 1. Isaiah 36 and 1. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of the king Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came against the defense cities of Judah and took them. Bang, bang, bang. They collapsed. He busted through their walls. They had machines that would battering rams. And uh, this is in history because they have these uh, steels and they have these engravings that they found in some of the ruins over there. And uh, they would have inscriptions and drawings in, in plaster of these military defeats. And it would show the Assyrian army and Sennacherib. It would show the Israelites. And, and they're all on their hands and knees begging for mercy. But they, they ex ex excavated in one of the ruins um, uh, stones that they threw with a sling, like David, you know. And I was looking at those compared to a man's hand. Now, you, you think a slingshot like this, and you have a little pebble, right? Quarter inch, half inch, maybe. And now, if you're real bad, maybe the size of a golf ball. These things were the, the size of a, a, a hard baseball. I mean, they were, they were big. And, they, and they're throwing uh, these at people. Uh, and what, you get hit on the noggin with that, you're dead. Arrows and all this, and he had battering rams. He could just knock through a big wall. Well, anyhow, they're bad. And the king of Assyria sent Rabshakeh. That's not the man's name. That's his title. It means a military commander from Lachish that just collapsed to Jerusalem where Hezekiah with a great army. Now, now, what's in Jerusalem? Jerusalem, that's where the temple is. That's where, that's where the ark is, all this precious stuff. So the enemy, he starts out at the periphery, and he starts zeroing in on the center and the heart of your worship, your place of worship in your, in your, your worship life and your serving God. That's, where, that's his goal. He wants to take you out there and get rid of all of that. So he, he's never changed his plan. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool of the highway of the fuller's field. And Hezekiah saw this coming. So Hezekiah, there was one spring, only one spring, one source of water in Jerusalem. And that was the Gihon Spring. And it was outside of the wall. So what he did, and he had pools, a couple pools, pool of Siloam, where, where the, the blind man was healed, where Jesus ministered from. But, but he made a tunnel from outside the wall all the way inside the wall. And all this is in history, and it's recorded. And I've been in Hezekiah's tunnel. And what they did, they started at the spring, and another started inside the city wall at the pool, and they started chiseling and making a tunnel. And it's about, it's taller than me. A six-foot-tall man could stand up and it's shoulder wide, some places a little wide, some places you have to turn sideways, and some folks, they ain't going to get through there. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So anyway, and, but they started at both ends, and it just snakes around and so forth. And Josephus wrote this, and, and also it was in, in uh, an inscription of, an, of, a, of an, a, a, a secular historian that it says that when they got to one point, they could hear the hammers of each other. And when they, and how did they do this? But anyhow, this serpentine snaking around tunnel started at both ends. And when they got to the middle, 
pick, 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 and they were getting dust and stones in their face. They, if that wasn't divine, but he made a tunnel so he could get water, and he covered up the, the spring because he didn't want to give the enemies water, and if they're under siege, they didn't want to go outside the wall of Jerusalem to get water, so he did that, and it's kind of neat. And before that, there's another tunnel called the Canaanite tunnel that they dug years ago, so I thank the Lord for the Canaanites that made that too. So uh, that's what they did. It's a, it's a real story that happened, and it's something, a, a real experience that they had. So Rabshakeh, uh, verse 4, said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, saith the great king, the king of Syria, that's Sennacherib, what confidence is this wherein thou trustest? I say, sayest thou, but they are vain words. I have counsel and strength for war now. On whom do you trust that thou rebels against me? Lo, thou trustest in the staff of a broken reed on Egypt. So he thinks Israel is trusting on Egypt army to help them and save them from Assyria. He says, if you, if you lean on Egypt, uh, on that staff, it's going to pierce and go right through your hand. You're going to get hurt. So is Pharaoh the king to all that trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God. Is it not he whose high places and altars Hezekiah hath taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, ye shall worship in this altar? Now, therefore, give pledges, I pray thee. In other words, give us some money, your hard-earned living. Wait a minute. We don't give pledges and tribute to heathens. We pay tithes to the Lord. We're not giving you our money, the Lord's money. Forget it, Sennacherib. Verse 8. And I will give you 2,000 horses, and uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 2,000 horses for your military. If you got any, if you got anybody who knows how to ride a horse, that's what he's saying, smart alley. Verse 9, how then wilt thou turn away from the face of the captain of the least of All right. And 10, and I am come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it. The Lord said to me, go against this land, destroy it. So anyhow, here he's standing up before Israel. Oh, by the way, Israel, the Lord told me, uh, come and destroy you. That's what the Lord told me. There's a lot of people out there, says, thus saith the Lord, and um, it ain't nothing but a lie. God never said that. Verse 11, then Elikam, Shabna, Joah, unto Rabshakeh, speak, I pray thee, in the servants in the Syrian language. So they're saying to now listen, there's a lot of people here, a lot of people on the wall. Uh, now don't talk Hebrew covenant language because they understand it. Speak a Syrian language. You can do all this talking. That way they don't understand it. We understand Syrian. We understand heathen language, but they don't. So don't talk, don't talk Hebrew. And uh, so then Rabshika said, Hath my master sent to the master to speak to thee these words? Hath not he sent me to the men that sit upon the wall that, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? We're talking about uh, us being under siege and losing the source of food. You're going to starve to death. So in other words, if you don't uh, give in and agree and concur, then uh, we're going to close off this city and you're just going to starve to death until you're eating the, what comes from your own bodies. Verse 13, and Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language. You know, some people will come to God's people threatening them, and they'll speak covenant language. They'll quote scriptures. That's what the devil does. They'll come, so wait, and then that makes such confusion to you. What? Wait a minute, is this right? Is, is, this, is this really I'm so confused. Is this God? Is this of God? What should I do? Should I just, should we give in? And Speaking in the Jews' language. 14, thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you. Don't let your, your leader fool you because he will not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying the Lord will surely deliver you. This city will not be delivered in the hand of king. Hearken not to Hezekiah and say, saith unto the king of Assyria, make an agreement with us. Okay, let's go on. And uh, verse 17, we're going to come and take away your land. We're going to take away everything from you. Now, don't listen to Hezekiah. Don't let him persuade you, saying the Lord will deliver us. Let me ask you, Jews, has any of the gods of the nations delivered his 
land out of the hand of the king of Syria? Is there anybody who the Lord God, your Lord God, has delivered from me? No. Every one of them read the headlines. It's reality. It's in the news. It's the truth. Everyone's collapsed. So do you think God's going to spare you? Not a chance. It's not going to happen. And he starts naming places in, in uh, Israel. Even Israel, your brothers in Israel, they collapsed, they fell. And, and verse 20, who among the gods of the lands have they delivered their land out of my hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But they held their peace. These representatives, liaisons from Judah, from Jerusalem, they didn't say a word. And the king said, don't answer him. Listen here, folks. You're wasting your time arguing with the devil, arguing with the enemy. <laughs> don't give him fodder Don't to, to, to argue with. Just hold your peace. The Lord's going to take care of it. And so anyhow, they, they told this. They tore their clothes. They went to the king. Verse 37, it came to pass when Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes covered himself with sackcloth, 37 and 1, and went to the house of the Lord. So we're talking about God's provision and protection. We're talking about a city fixing to be under siege, no food, be a wall smashed through, people killed, hauled away prisoners of war. And so he went into the house of the Lord, and he had a letter, and he took it and he laid it out before the Lord. And he said, in verse 4, It may be the Lord will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Syria's master has sent to reproach the living God, will prove the words which the Lord that God hath heard. And so uh, they went and got Isaiah the prophet. In Isaiah 6, verse 6, Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Syria have blasphemed me. Don't, don't fear the words. Words, you know, words are powerful. There are people, you know, the old man, the old priest, Eli, a word killed him. There's people that's got a word. They've had a heart attack and died on the spot, had a razor blood pressure, had a stroke. Di words can hurt. Words can hurt as well as sticks and stones. The Lord said, Behold, in seven, I will send a blast upon him. He shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall. This is important. I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. I'm going to make Sennacherib. He's, he's going to hear a rumor. He's going to retreat. He's going to turn his back on you. He's heading back to Nineveh. He's going back to Syria, and he's going to fall by a sword in his own land. You ain't going to have to kill him. His own people's going to kill him. So, verse 8, Rabshakeh returned, found the king of Assyria warring against Libna. Okay, let me see. Let's go down to, thus, verse 10, thus she shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, whom thou trustest, deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given to Assyria. And then Rabshakeh again started, started hammering away at him, trying to destroy his faith. You're just like all the other nations. You're going to crumble, going to fall. The gods of these nations have not saved them. And he started then rapping on God, criticizing God, putting down God, and, and being, uh, being, saying bad, bad things. You just don't do that. You don't talk about God like that. So, 14, Hezekiah received the letter, went up to the house of the Lord, spread it out for the Lord, and Hezekiah prayed. O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, dwells between the cherubim, thou art God, even alone. And he's addressing God. He said, Lord, hear us, verse 17, what the words that Sennacherib has sent to reproach the living God. See, it gets to a point where they're not just reproaching God's people, they're reproaching God. They got to be careful. God, God can kill people that reproach his children and reproach him. Amen? So, it's true. Hezekiah is saying, Lord, it's true. Kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations. It's true. 
They've cast their gods in the fire. It's true. Now, therefore, Lord, 20, save us from his hand. Then Isaiah, verse 21, and this is getting good. Sent Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, these are prophetic words. Prophetic words, declaring prophetic words, they are very powerful, and they don't die. And we'll bring that out in just a minute about that one point we made earlier. Whereas thou hast prayed against Sennacherib, okay, this is the word, 22, the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, that's talking about Jerusalem, hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed, and against whom hast thou ex exalted thy voice, lifted up, even against the Holy One of Israel? So you're not coming against Jerusalem. You're not coming against the Jews. You're coming against their God. All right? And by thy servants... Thou, by thy servants, uh, Rabshakeh and the others, thou hast reproached the Lord and hast said, by the multitude of my chariots, I come up to the heights of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon. He's going and he's talking. I've dig, I've drunk water. The sole of my feet have dried up all the rivers, besieged places. I've, I've dried up the Nile River in Egypt. I've gone over the Tigris, Euphrates, everything in between. I've dried up. I've conquered the whole the whole area is mine. That's a large area. You've heard long ago I've done it. Okay, therefore their inhabitants were small power. Let's go on. The Lord in verse 20 said, but I know thy abode. I know where you live. I know you're going out. I know you're coming in. I know all of your strategies, and I know you're raging against me. Because thy rage against me and thy tumult is come up to my ears, therefore will I put a hook in thy nose and, my bri and a bridle on thy lips. I will turn thee back by the way which thou came. You think you're your own person? You and your armies coming up to Jerusalem? I'm going to put a big hook right in your no nose like like they put a big tuna hook in the jaw of a big fish and they just haul him in against his will, haul him in the, in the boat. You can't fight against it. And all this shall be a sign. Ye shall eat this year such as grow by itself. The land's going to keep growing. The second year, that which spring the death, sir. And then the third year, reap, plant vineyards, and eat the fruit thereof. So there's always going to be provision. The Lord's in this protection, saying there's going to be provision. And the remnant that is escaped out of the house of Jews shall take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. Okay. Verse 33. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Israel. Watch this. He sh Now, this is a, a prophetic declaration from the Lord. And I'm not going to get to the other stories in this lesson, maybe sometime in when I'm teaching or preaching. He shall not come into this city. Okay. Hezekiah, Israel, all right? I know what he says. I know he has a fierce army, and they outnumber you a 1,000 to 1. But he's not coming through the wall of this city. He's not coming into the gate. He's not going to shoot an arrow there. There ain't no arrows going to come over the wall and strike you. No projectiles from over the wall going to strike you. It's not going to happen. This is what the Lord's saying nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. He's not going to take it in siege. And by the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and he shall not come in this city, saith the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. I've had the destroyer come and attack my finances and my assets. And I say they're covenant because... For 50-something years, every dime I've made, 10% has gone to the Lord. And it's covenant. It's covenant. And so he rebukes the devourer. Yes, sir. God protects things that are covenant. Then the angel of the Lord went forth. Ho, oh, ho, the angel. I'm not talking 1,000 angels, 100,000 angels. I'm talking an angel. Chapter 37, verse 36. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Syrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. One hundred and eighty-five thousand. One angel, one night. That pretty much decimated the Assyrian army. When they arose, when the Israelites arose in the morning, behold, 
they looked out there, there were all dead corpses. Didn't have to lift a finger. And so Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, departed. Here's the king, and he went and returned, dwelt in Nineveh. Okay, remember the Lord said, by the way he came, he's going to turn around. So he's got this terrible defeat and an embarrassment in front of all the nation. He's, he's um, putting his tail between his leg like a cowed down puppy. He's going back to his hometown, right? He's defeated. But remember what the Lord said? You're going to die by the sword in your own city. That's what the prophet said. Came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his God, that Adramelech and Sherezer, his son, smote him with a sword, and they escaped in the land of Ararat. And Esther Hayden, his son, reigned instead. The Bible says this, that the angel destroyed all those, and we know that they didn't. Uh, the, but before they killed them, they came, and, and the Lord said, they're not going to shoot an arrow into the city. Remember that? Didn't the Lord say, they're not going to shoot an arrow? This is in history, Jewish historian Josephus, and also in the chronicles of, of um, Assyria that they dug up and found in Nineveh. There's also clay tablets that tell about this, why they lost the battle. Boy, they had to eat crow, the Assyrians. What happened was, and this is two accounts, mice, mice, mice. They're all camped around there getting drunk. They knew they had it in the bag that Israel couldn't stand against them. They had all their equipment. They're ready, they're ready to blow through the walls, shoot arrows, sling stones. And history from two sources, Jewish and heathen sources, said while they were in camp, probably drunk and partying and so forth and out of their mind, that the Lord sent a huge swarm of mice mice. And while they're all their weaponry, their bows and arrows and their slings for slinging and their pouches and all this and the cords that the, the ropes that, that, that operate those machines, those battering rams, the mice, there were so many of them. There were millions, tens of millions of mice swarmed in there and chewed the gut bowstrings and they couldn't eat. They're, they had no bow string. Their bows didn't work. And their slingers were chewed up. And the ropes on those battering rams were all chewed up. God sent mice so they couldn't do it. And then after he got done with that, they're frustrated. Then God sent an angel, I don't know of a plague, and killed 185,000 of them. And the ones with their laugh left, tucked tail, went back to Assyria, as, as did Sennacherib. Now, okay, Isaiah the prophet, speaking by the Lord, the Lord says, you're going to fall by the sword. Israel's not going to have to get their hands bloody over you. You're going back. And he went back. Five years went by. Nothing happened. Oh, he's embarrassed. Egg on his face. He ain't got no, nothing to brag about but he's just hanging out in Nineveh. Ten years went by. Yep. Yeah, I know what the Lord said. Look, I'm still here. Nah, nah, nah. Fifteen years went by. Eighteen years went by. I'm still here. When the clock struck twenty years, God's word is enduring, and people might forget about it and think, uh-huh, God forgot. His judgments pass. It's not going to happen. One day, he's expecting nothing. He goes to his pagan temple worshiping his god, Nisroch, ever who that is, and uh, two of his own sons, blood, came in there, and they killed their father, the king, right in the, his house of worship. And then the third son became the king. And, and he wrote in the, in, a, in the Chronicles of Assyria how that his two brothers did an unthinkable thing, killed the king. But the word of the Lord came true. God, I'm not going to keep you on and on, 
But I just wanted to say this with this one story, and there's some other story about Egypt and the Israelites and so forth. But the Lord will fight your battles for you. He will fight your battles for you. But just, and this is a point in the end of the lesson, let me just say, we have a part in our own defense. Okay? And, and, just, and we'll go over the New Testament. And that is, we, we have to do what the Lord tells us to do. He does the big stuff if we do the little stuff. He does the stuff that's impossible to us if we do what's possible. And so what he wants us to do is put on the armor of God. We, and to some degree, we defend ourselves. And the way we do that is by putting on the armor of God every day. Let's pray, have all the, the spiritual weapons, the seven of them. And they're very powerful. And so, but the things that are out of your hand, beyond you and beyond me, and I've had to call on God and watch him work a miracle, he will do it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He'll make a way. He'll make a way. The, 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 the king of, and, and, and I'll be gross a minute, the, the, the king told them, Israel, we're going to sew up this city and you're going to be eating your own excrement. Yes, sir, that's, you're gonna be your, that's going to be your fare. But then the Lord says, no, sir. This land, you're not going to have to till it, nothing. This land's just going to bring forth a bunch of fruit. You're going to eat that for three years till this goes away. And God provides while the enemy's blowing his hot breath down your neck. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Manning, I heard you did a great job Wednesday night. Would you pray, dismiss our lesson? Jesus' name, amen at the word.